Good morning from Rome, Italy. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for your coming. Good morning. This is Sose from Geneva. Thank you. Good morning. That's it. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon from Malaysia. Afternoon. Yes, welcome, welcome. 9.30 in the morning in Rome. Uh, good morning from Cairo. I'm uh, Dr. Hanan el from Cairo, TBRI in Cairo, and it's 10 o'clock, 10.30 in, in Cairo. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, the meeting will begin in two minutes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome all of you to participate in this uh, webinar to uh, end the uh, NTD epidemic. As you know, NTD, the neglect tropical disease, causes uh, devastating health 
social and economic consequences for more than 1 billion people. Technically, WHO has set up over 50 COVID centers related to the NTDs to develop more advanced technologies and cost-effective strategies. In order to effectively control NTD worldwide, actually, uh, uh, the WHO already set up the World NTD Day on 31 May 2021. So this year, the themes of the World NTD Day is act now, act together, invest in neglect tropical disease. So we, WHO, Corporate centers related to the entities get together today to promote a moment to end the ep uh, epidemic of entities through this webinar. We will discuss more about the uh, cooperation mechanism and the way of moving forward. So, this webinar, co, co proposed by seven WHO corporate centers, including the WHO. Public Center for Tropical Disease at the National Institute of Pesticides uh, in China. And the WHO Public Center for Schistosomiasis Control at the uh, Tadal Biohaz mm -hmm. Research Institute in Egypt. WHO Public Center for the Epidemiology and the Control of Helminth Infections at the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute in Switzerland. WHO Corporate Center for Research and Control of Opstoxis, Southeast Asia Liver Fruit Disease at Konki University in Thailand. WHO Corporate Center for Ecology, Taxonomy, <laughs> Control of Vectors of Malaria, Filariasis, and Dengue at the Institute of Medical Research in Malaysia and WHO Corporate Center for the Epidemiology Detection and Control of Cystic and Avira Econocosis in Humans and Animals at the Institute Supero di Sant'Ida in Italy, as well as the WHO Corporate Center for Vector Surveillance and Management at the National Institute for Communicable Disease Control and Prevention uh, at China CDC in Beijing, China. So we are very happy to see so important uh, uh, leaders and experts coming from uh, different uh, international agencies and uh, WHO corporate centers to participate in this uh, webinar. This including the Dr. Sosifo, Director of NTD Department of WHO HQ, and Professor Hong Bingsen, the Director General of China CDC, and Dr. Yugi Yuzing, Director of the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute. And also we involved by Ms. Hemogena Gila from WHO HQ Office for Management of WHO Corporate Centers. And Dr. Yue Liu, the WEPRO Office for Management of WHO's Corporate Centers. Together with uh, all the directors from different uh, WHO Corporate Center related to the NTDs. So welcome all of you to participate. First of all, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sosifo, Director of uh, NTD Department of WHO to deliver his uh, opening remarks. So, Dr. Fo, your floor now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Zhu. Good morning, good afternoon, dear colleagues, friends, partners, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to speak today at your World NTD webinar. As you know, this is my first World NTD Day as director of the Global NTD Program. And it's my pleasure to be speaking to you today. World NTD 2022 is also the occasion on which WHO publishes its latest global report on the fight against NTD, based on progress against the target set 
in the 2030 NTD roadmap. I'm happy to say that despite many challenges, including a global pandemic, progress in the two years since the roadmap was endorsed and published has been significant. COVID-19 was, of course, a sobering time for NTD programs. And it brought further suffering to many people in areas where which were already fragile and depending on those programs for contact with the former health system. Even so, the number of people needing NTD treatment and intervention fell by some 80 million people between 2020 and 2021. And while the peak period of COVID-19 pandemic saw the number of people being treated decrease by 34% when comparing 2019 and 2020, in 2021, we did see the bond that we had hoped to see and an increase of 11% in treatment administrative. We can say then that the post-COVID recovery is ongoing and progressing well. Other cause for optimism is the fact that as of December 2022, 47 countries had eliminated at least one NTD from their territories. This is against a 2030 target of 100 countries achieving elimination. So once again, I believe that our progress is good, but it must put us on the greater consolidation of our work today. Many of you will have seen that the Carter Center have published recently the provisional delay warm figure for 2022, just 13 human cases recorded. This again is thanks to the exceptional work of countries, partners, and especially community workers and community members in affected countries. The global trend in recent times toward a significant reduction of NTD disease burden. In 2021, 25% fewer people worldwide needed treatment for these diseases compared to 2010. That is cause to be optimistic, therefore, but we still need added focus on the greater investment in NTDs because there are challenges ahead that we can foresee as well as others that still spring up and surprise us. The global landscape is ongoing a period of change, both in terms of funding and global health priorities. This decade too promises to be the one in which climate change bursts onto the scene in ways we have yet to properly comprehend and integrate. And that is why we need to focus up. You need the focus of even such World Entity Day so that we can advocate for program and initiative which reach some of the world's most remote communities communities that have been left behind for too long already. WHO collaborative centers are great resource for WHO. By advancing science, they continue to generating and refining WHO guidance and therefore will fill those normative and operational gaps that hinder full implementation of the NTD roadmap. Since 2000, WHO has specifically encourage collaborative center to strengthen work exchanges and synergies through the establishment of collaborating network. At present, several WHO collaborating centers networks have been established. However, there is no, as yet a WHO collaborating center network on NTD. It is therefore great news that today on the World NTD Day 2023, a network will be launched. The network will enable to over 50 WHO NTD collaborative centers to work together to earn the NTD by means of improved collaboration mechanisms. I applaud this initiative and thank those involved for their hard work in establishing this network. It is my aim to strengthen even more the relationship between WHO NTD program and WHO collaborative centers through this network so that a vigorous synergy may accelerate progress toward, towards a world free of NTD. 
There is so much to be done, and it's, it's through a more focused collaboration that we will truly accelerate programmatic progress and achieve target associated with the first pillar of the 2030 NTB roadmap. I have been struck since my arrival at the department by the dedication and passion of those who work so tirelessly in the NTB community. This alongside the strong link we can and must foster in the coming months will be our greatest thing. I thank you very much for your ongoing commitment and look forward to working with all of you. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. For for your sharing the information of the big progress for the NTD control since the first roadmap launched in 2012. And I encourage of all WHO corporate center to make more efforts to contribute to the end of the NTD epidemic in the future. Thank you so much. And now this webinar actually supported by my boss from China CDC, so Professor Hong Bin Sen from uh, uh, the Director General of the China CDC uh, will deliver the welcome speech. So Dr. Sen, your please. Okay, so distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon and uh, good evening. At this special time of the Chinese Lunar New Year, on behalf of Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention, I would like to welcome all the representatives from WHO and the WHO Collaboration Center focusing on neglected tropical diseases and all the guests from all over the world gather together virtually to open this meeting. Currently, NTD affect more than 1.2 billion people who live mostly in impoverished communities, but attracted limited attention for, from global funding agencies and the very limited resources are allocated. As we know, NTDs have the greatest relevance for UN Sustainable Development Goal. Interventions against the NTDs directly contribute to the achievement of the SDG 3.3 and the epidemics of neglected tropical diseases. At the same time, WHO's new roadmap for 2021 to 2030 sets out ambitious targets in tackling many of these diseases in an integrated manner. But how to achieve these ambitious goals? Collaboration and cooperation within the WHO collaborating centers will be great impo important to achieve goal three of SDG, as well as WHO's new roadmap. As we all know, over 800 WHO collaborating centers in over 80 member states are working with WHO, and there are over 50 centers working on NTDs. China CDC has two WHO collaborating centers associated with NTD. One is WHO collaborating center for tropical diseases based at the National Institute of Parasitic Diseases located in Shanghai. And another one is WHO Collaborating Center for Vector Surveillance and Management based at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases Control and Prevention located in Beijing. China has worked closely with the WHO and the international partners to contribute to the global elimination of tropical diseases through global health projects and the consulting services. In November 2022, the WHO Collaborating Centers related to tropical diseases in China held a meeting to discuss how to establish a domestic cooperation mechanism 
and play a role in the global tropical diseases elimination. To share China's technology of tropical disease prevention and control. Today is the World NTD Day. It will be meaningful for these NTD relevant WHO collaborating centers move forward hand in hand to make NTDs less neglected and mobilize resources to end the epidemics of NTDs. I hope this will be a fruitful meeting and urge everyone to take this opportunity to communicate, to assist, to collaborate, and to support the national, regional, and the world health development. Last but not least, I recommend all our NTD relevant WHO collaborating centers join our efforts to establish a network in order to facilitate to achieving the goal of WHO new roadmap. And our China CDC can provide a secretary office to serve the network. Thank you and a happy new year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sen. Particularly, you proposed uh, one um, uh, promotion to the setup of the WHO Corporate Center Network on neglected tropical disease. So we will see what's our discussion and what's the outcome of this uh, meeting. So we hope uh, the major outcome of the meeting will be follow this uh, proposal. Thank you once again for Professor Sen. Now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Yogi Yuzing, the director of the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute because uh, he is a one of a uh, major uh, um, proposal to, for this uh, uh, webinar. So Prof, uh, Dr. Yugi Yuzinga, your floor now. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Cho. Also from my end, a very big pleasure to participate in this important uh, get together, uh, of course, uh, now by Zoom, but hopefully Zoom uh, also in person. Uh, Professor Cho, we thank you very much for bringing us together. You said the theme of today's NTD Day is act now and act together. And you already demonstrate how you bring us together. It is for me uh, actually the first time that I'm in the same room as Dr. Sosefal. Uh, the new head of the NTD department at WHO. Uh, we are neighbors. He is based in Geneva. I'm based here in Basel, Algerie, but we have not yet met in person. So, uh, Dr. Fall, I very much look forward. Uh, je me réjouis de faire votre connaissance d'ici quelques jours, mais c'est grâce à notre cher professeur Cho qu'on est ensemble. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Professor Cho. Also, big pleasure to see uh, Dr. Zen, your boss at China CDC. Uh, a few words about our institute, the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute. We have now an 80 year history, but we would not be what we are without partnership. So partnership, and therefore also these networks of collaboration, now in this case, built around neglected tropical diseases is very, very crucial. It is dear, it is within our DNA, I would say. For instance, we have partnership with the Ifakara Health Institute in Tanzania that goes back to the 1950s with the Centre Suisse de Recherche Scientifique en Côte d'Ivoire, also going back to the 1950s. With you, Professor Cho, as the director of the National Institute of Parasitic Disease, China CDC, a very solid partnership for more than 25 years. Once again, big, big thanks to all. We are also pleased that within this space of about 800 or 900 WHO collaborating center. Uh, we at Swiss TBH, we host three, 
one in neglected tropical is helminth specifically. That's why uh, Peter Steinman and I are sitting here. But we also have one on malaria and the third one very new on verbal autopsy. But now uh, let me focus just a few words on our uh, WHO collaborating center on, collaborate, uh, on epidemiology and control of helminthic infections. We pursue since about 10 years, six activities, and I just highlight two. One is on the spatial temporal surveillance, spatially explicit burden estimates, and evaluation of control interventions of major human helminthic infections. Within our partnership, we were able to demonstrate that over the past 15 years, schistosomiasis prevalence in sub-Saharan Africa has been reduced by 60%. We have demonstrated that based on a global neglected tropical disease database, where data is constantly fed in from the peer-reviewed literature, from important WHO sources, from ministries of health, and of course, thanks to the donation of Prasiguantel in that case, but also the social and economic development of many, many of the African countries, we see a very strong decline of schistosomiasis prevalence. But we must continue the work. We are not yet there. And as much more progress we made, we go towards elimination. It's harder and harder to get also the funding to do, to continue the job and to go from control to elimination. So we need to do it uh, together. And the second main activity I highlight is drug development in the anti-helminthic space. And here as an example, we could demonstrate now again through the partnership of the WHO collaborating centers that the combination of albendazole and ivermectin, for instance, uh, shows very good promise in treating, controlling several of the neglect uh, of the soil transmitted helminthiasis. We are now entering also a, a, a new phase with a new compound by the pharmaceutical company uh, Bayer, in this case, Emodepside, where we have very, very promising uh, first results, specifically against Trichoris trichuria. Just to highlight two of the key activities, and we feel very strongly that even stronger partnership, collaboration across the NTD, the WHO CCs, this has considerable potential. And let me emphasize, we are ready to act now to get to act together in controlling, eliminating NTDs. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you for your comments on the partnership as well as introduce the what happened in your center, corporate center. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, opening ceremony is uh, really important for us to understanding why we are work together. So now next session, we will go into the how to cooperate each other. And uh, so I would like to invite uh, my colleague, Dr. Liu San, the chief of the Global Health uh, Center in NIPD, to chair next session. Dr. Liu, your please now. Yes, okay, uh, thank you very much. So good morning, good evening. And uh, uh, so it, it's my pleasure to uh, chair this session. And in this session, we have the three report. Um, so maybe it take about 30 minutes, but I think it's also a little bit more minutes for this uh, so the first topic is um, currently situation and the global uh, uh, global actions to elimination of NTD. And the speaker uh, is uh, Dr. Su Se Fall from WHO headquarters. And uh, now he is a director of um, NTD's department. So it's your, it's your floor, Susie. Dr. Susie Fu, it's your floor. But you, you are mute. Yeah. Susie. 
Sorry, Dr. Susi, you are, you are mute. I'm sorry. So we can't, you, you just turn off your camera, but you still mute. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. yes sure enough. Oh, Thank you. Sorry, sorry, I'm back to. Um, good morning or afternoon again. Um, uh, Let me just make sure that Dr. Uh, Sosefur, so um, you maybe turn off your camera, but it's still mute, so we can't hear you. Um, no. Th thank you. Sorry, I don't, there was some confusion, I believe, because uh, the progress I presented in the beginning was part of this topic. And <laughs> apparently, I was just supposed to give some opening remark. But let me highlight, you know, in more detail some of the progress we have made, uh, you know, again, the roadmap. Mm -hmm. As I was saying, we are publishing today our first progress report since the, the roadmap have been launched. And uh, just to, to remind everybody that uh, we have a number of targets on the 2030 roadmap, mainly you know, having 90% people requiring intervention against NTDs, 70% fewer NTD-related daily, 100 countries achieving elimination of at least one NTD, and eradication of two NTDs, Draconculus and yours. And uh, so this new progress report highlights a number of progress I just talked about, meaning that uh, we have the people requiring NTD intervention that fell by 8 million people between 2020 and 2021. And we have also eight countries certified or validated as having eliminated one entity in 2022 alone. And uh, as December 2022, 47 countries had eliminated at least one NTD, you know, keeping in mind that we have this target of 100 countries by 2030. And uh, progress also in 21-22 builds on the decade of sustained improvement. And in 2021, 25% fewer people required intervention against NTD compared to 2010. And more than 1 billion people were treated each year between 2016 and 2019 through mass treatment intervention. If you look at some of the disease specifics, I talked about Guinea worm already where the capital center released a recent report mentioning only 13 human cases uh, worldwide. And uh, that's down from 15 in 2021 and presents the lowest number ever recorded. But this number needs to be verified and confirmed. Of course, we have seen the impact of the COVID-19 disruption, and that's why I mentioned the 34% addition in terms of uh, people receiving treatment between 2019 and 2020. But we are already seeing sign of recovery with plus 11% reborn in 2021. And in terms of high-level advocacy, I think uh, 
is really important to highlight that the World Health Assembly has recognized the 38th of January as the World NTD Day. This is very new and uh, get great progress in terms of advocacy. The same, the adoption of the Abu Dhabi Declaration on the Eradication of Guinea War, and also the adoption of the Kigali Declaration on Neglected Tropical Diseases. If you look at medicine and diagnosis, we have seven memorandum of understanding between WHO and major pharmaceutical partners sign our renewal for in-kind donation of medicine and diagnostic equipment. The same is the expanded donation reaching new diseases like albendazole for cystic echinococcosis. Ensuring more quality ensured medicine also for pharmaceutical products qualified by WHO in 2021 and 2022, and also 18 target product profile for diagnosis development. We have also developed a number of new tools and guidelines and all the information product to assist the global NTD community. And just to highlight that now we have 19 NTD courses in the Open WHO platform. This is you know, a free access learning platform. In terms of uh, sustainability and country ownership, the launch of the NTD sustainability framework, the ML framework, and the investment rationale for NTD are real progress we need to continue implementing. And we have also expanded in collaboration, in terms of collaboration with, uh, you know, WHO, between WHO and partners through platforms such as United to Combat NTD, the Neglected Tropical Disease NGO Network, and the NTD Supply Chain. And uh, in spite of the COVID-19 crisis and challenging economic situation, many commitments were made by partners in conjunction with the Kigali Declaration on NTD. So for this World NTD Day, as you already highlighted, the team is act now, act together, invest, in neglected tropical disease, and including in an invitation to countries, government, field teams, scientific experts, implementing partners, and also collaborating stakeholders to unite around the principle of collaboration and investment to end the scourge of NTDs for some of the world's most impoverished communities. And uh, but greater effort and investment are required to reverse delay and ensure the gains, ensure the past gains are not lost, as well as to accelerate progress towards the 2030 roadmap target. Entity intervention can be made more efficient by accelerating intervention in high burden countries. Two, addressing all NTDs cohesively through an entire health system approach, scaling up cross-cutting intervention outside the health sector, education, nutrition, water, sanitation, and hygiene, animal and environmental health in the spirit of One Health. Filling operational gaps, for example, through the development of better medicine and better diagnostic tools. So the global NTD community need to work towards ensuring that a steady flow of resources is made available to support NTD program worldwide within the wider framework of primary health care, health system strengthening, but also health security, you know, climate change, and one health. And promoting country ownership and accountability as well as the sustainability and predictability of financing include more robust domestic financing are key to achieve the NTD roadmap goals. And uh, so I think we have through this partnership and a networking opportunity to really identify critical technical operational gap, we can address together working with countries and communities to accelerate the implementation of the roadmap. I thank you.
Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Sothi, uh, for to highlight the map for the NTD. Uh, so we have made a lot of uh, progress, but also we have some challenges. Uh, just like um, uh, the, the open ceremony, the experts said we should, uh, should work together and fighting the NTDs. So um, I think uh, uh, WHO Collaborating Center is also uh, important partners for the WHO. So the next topic is about um, uh, its role and uh, challenges of WHO Collaborate, Collaborating Center on the NTD. So I'm very happy to invite the three uh, speakers in this uh, report. One is uh, from WHO headquarters, and the two is uh, from WHO um, Western Pacific Regions Office. And I think as a first, I like uh, uh, would like to invite uh, Dr. Perm Juna um, Vajila. Uh, she is uh, from WHO headquarters, and it, now it's your full floor. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Uh, hello, uh, good morning and good evening, everyone. Um, if I can share my screen, it, will, it might be easier for the presentation. Uh, therefore, I am sharing my screen now. Um, I'm going to be presenting um, WHO Collaborating Center Networks and Best Practices. Um, and the context of this presentation will involve just the definition of the mechanism, strategic rationale for designation as a collaborating center, collaborating center network types, some characteristics of successful networks, lessons learned, networks from bilateral to multilateral connections, and tips for successful designation as a collaborating center. Um, I'm working within the HQ in the Collaborating Center Unit uh, in, within the Quality Assurance of Norms and Standards Department, and I'm conducting the review of collab Collaborating Center Agreements. Uh, collaborating Centers uh, are um, agreements that we have with um, 800 plus institutions around the world, which uh, many of the, those are prestigious research institutes. Um, in more than 80 member states, 96 to be exact. They are supporting WHO's programs with activities that have been specifically planned with and tailored for WHO. And they're one of the largest in-kind resource mobilization mechanisms of WHO, contributing up to $25 million uh, per year. Uh, and they're a formal mechanism for collaboration and they constitute an international collaborative network. The strategic rationale for designation is always the formalization of an existing successful collaboration between WHO and an external institution. Your institutions have been collaborating with uh, your responsible officers for many years, therefore um, you, are, you are contributing to WHO's um, work and WHO is gaining access to your valuable resources and capacity, but uh, also shaping uh, the international health agenda. And the designation as a collaborating center provides the institutions with enhanced visibility, recognition by national authorities, calling public attention to the health issues on which, um, on which they work, and it opens up improved opportunities to exchange information and develop technical cooperation with other institutions. Uh, in the diagram below, you can see some of the areas of work uh, for which we have collaborating centers. And here you can see the geographic location of collaborating centers distributed within the world. Uh, collaborating centers working on NTDs are diverse. There's more than 50 designated centers listed under 15 different collaborating center subjects, uh, such as communicable diseases, uh, filarial infections, infection control, leishmaniasis, leprosy, NTDs, others, parasitic diseases, rabies, schistosomiasis, tourist health and travel medicine, trypanosomiasis, vector uh, biology and control, viral diseases, viral hemorrh hemorrhagic fevers, and zoonosis. 
This you can find through the Collaborating Center database, which is public and discoverable through the Collaborating uh, Center internet page. The Collaborating Center networks um, are, are a mechanism of collaboration, which is um, constituted by the department responsible for a number of collaborating centers. Um, these can be either uh, technical networks, uh, such as the one that you are uh, establishing the, uh, for the entities, or geographic networks with collaborating centers located within one geographic region. Uh, region. Existing networks of collaborating centers have shown that developing a network of collaborating centers, as opposed to working with them one-to-one, -one, can be a cost-effective mechanism that greatly contributes to the planning and implementation of the agreed activities and gives an additional incentive to the centers. And networks can help drive strategy, support faster problem solving, both locally and regionally, uh, cross-fertilize ideas and increase opportunities for innovation and build common language. Networks, other networks of collaborating centers that um, are, are existing, technical networks, um, they're uh, listed here in this slide. I'm not going to mention it, but you can find this information in our internet website. Um, characteristics of successful networks of collaborating centers uh, all stem from a good, strong leadership from WHO when, when WHO organizes uh, a network. There is an, a strategic uh, plan that uh, lays out each um, of collab the collaborating centers roles and fosters joint projects and collaboration between the members of the network. Um, help, having a strong coordinator from within WHO or a champion from one of the collaborating centers will help sustain the network and keep it active. And an effective and efficient system of communication also will help. Also, a sufficient period of collaboration to get to know each of the centers separately and know their capabilities and uh, the, their strengths can help um, exacerbate this. this um, um, and also availability of funds, uh, if this is supported by WHO or one of the network um, participant members, this is um, one of the components of the successful network. Some lessons learned from uh, for developing a network. Um, one of the key elements to keep in mind is that planning meetings with well-defined objects, expected outcomes, which should include a joint plan of action for the future with well-defined roles for each um, collaborating center is always helpful. Scheduling meetings also adjacent to large conferences or other key events is um, very, a very good option and leveraging also electronic tools for collaboration. It's also good to explore twinning arrangements um, with an institution from a developing country and an institution from a developed country to help um, um, one another to involve the regional counterparts and include uh, some of these actions um, of the collaborating centers that they are going to do as part of the member of the network in the individual plan of each collaborating center at the occasion of the next redesignation. But some of the tips for a successful collaborating center, um, beyond the fact that a collaborating center can be part of a network, uh, collaborating centers are also agreements. And uh, these agreements uh, are contracts between WHO and the collaborating center, which have uh, TORs and activities, which are specific to, um, to co the contribution um, and specific to uh, what WHO would need for um, this collaboration. And uh, here you have some other slides informing what a successful collaboration with, uh, with WHO is just as a collaborating center. And um, I'm going to finish uh, with uh, some of the further possibilities of collaboration, which are to contact your responsible officer within um, that is responsible to maintain the relationship to see different opportunities on how you can enhance uh, the collaboration with WHO, for instance, with other entities already working with WHO, such as NGOs, or to, de to develop or join a network. Um, I thank you very much for your contribution. There you can find some resources as well. And uh, thank you very much again for being members um, uh, of. Um, 
collaborating centers and also for the contribution to WHO's work. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Famajona. Is um, she has uh, generated uh, introduced a global level uh, WHO uh, collaborating centers. So now I would like uh, involve uh, Dr. Uh, Liu Yue. Um, she is uh, from the WHO Western uh, Pacific Region Office. And uh, Dr. Liu Yue, please. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Li Sheng. Um, and thank you, dear Hamjana, for your informative introduction from global perspective. And distinguished Dr. Shen, Professor Zhou, and dear NTD experts and my WHO fellow colleagues, Happy New Year. I'm Liu Yue, the Executive Officer in the Division of Program Management in the WHO office in the Western Pacific. I'm happy to see many old friends and lots of new friends today. Congratulations on the World NTD Day. NTD Day. Just wanted to share with you, I had also involved in the international cooperation on many NTD works such as systematic control in Africa when I was in China government. Last November, I attended the meeting of the WHO Collaborating Center on NTD in China and shared the experience of WHOCC network. Today, I'm so excited to see that initiative of establishing NTD, WHO Collaborating Center Networking, would come to reality very shortly. It's really amazing. Congratulations to all the WHO Collaborating Centers on NTD, and thanks for your great enthusiasm and efforts. Next, please. Today, my colleague, Dr. Kazim, who is the regional NTD team leader, and I will share our presentation of WHOCC's role, challenge, and experience from the Western Pacific region's perspective. Next, please. Focusing on the uh, WHO's collaborating center's work, based on the experience and lessons, we've identified the following common challenges such as lack of coordination among collaborating centers to work together and lack of platform for sharing, how to make a bigger impact at country level by cross-cutting approach, how to engage collaborating centers more in technical activities and country priorities, how to bring innovation to collaboration and lacking of communication and information sharing across countries and areas in the region. So these are some um, challenges that we have identified for the collaboration of WHO collaborating centers. And then how to address these challenges and the barriers. Just now, uh, uh, Harvard Jonah has shared many, many useful tips. And also I'd like to share some uh, insights for, from our WHO collaborating centers in our region. Next, please. In our region, we had the fourth WHO Collaborating Center Forum in Cambodia last uh, November, and where we had a very good interaction with the collaborating centers. To address above mentioned challenges, WHO and the, our collaborating centers agree on following actions, including WHO and the collaborating centers work together from the early stage stages of WHO's work plan development to best leverage networks. WHO and collaborating centers' collaborative efforts will emphasize a cross-cutting approach that focuses on strengthening elements of the health system and beyond health. WHO and uh, collaborating centers also work on improving coordination, and WHO and collaborating centers work together to create an innovation ecosystem WHO supports collaborating centers to know and understand the common issues across countries and areas in the region. So as you may see, encouraging and supporting networking is one of our priorities. Next, please. Here is a concrete example of successful networking in our region. The, collab the global network of WHO collaborating centers for nursing and midwife firstly formed between 1987 to 1988. The network has worked to strengthen and promote nursing and midwife leadership, education, practice, and research towards the goal of health for all. Next, please. 
this network of collaborating centers meet each other through various opportunities and platforms. And just to echo what uh, um, Hamjana said, they found that the leadership of WHO to the network are very, is very, very helpful. Next, please. And uh, these are what they found about uh, the benefits of having a network, including they can make effective use of each other's resources by conducting collaborative projects and sending staff to each other's projects. And they can also develop partnerships and cooperation beyond their activities as WHO collaborating centers. Next, please. As we know, WHO collaborating centers role is to support WHO to implement its vision and strategies. In our region, all the member states endorse this for the future vision, which is the implementation plan of the GPW 13 in our region. Therefore, the WHO collaborating centers play their roles and the guidance of this for the future vision. But concretely, for the NTD area, it is within our thematic priority of reaching the enriched. Next, please. And the guidance of the for the future vision. At our regional committee last October, our member states endorsed the regional framework for reaching the enriched in our region. And you may explore some possible opportunities for working in these areas. And now uh, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Dr. Kazim, for the focus on NTD work. Over to you, Kazim, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lu. And uh, good morning, good afternoon. And good evening, dear colleagues. And I'm really happy to be with uh, such great uh, global health leaders and uh, members of the NTD community. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Yes. So uh, the situation, uh, uh, NTD situation in the region, uh, we have uh, 15 out of the 20 NTDs endemic in 28 countries in the Western Pacific region. Uh, Western Pacific is the second highest burdened region uh, in the world. Uh, yes, we have challenges, but we have achievements also, and those are quite remarkable achievements. As you can see on the slide, uh, the region has eliminated uh, 10 countries out of the 22 endemic countries have eliminated lymphatic filariasis as a public health problem. Similarly, three out of the 11 endemic countries for uh, trachoma, they have uh, eliminated trachoma. Uh, schistosomiasis uh, has been eliminated in three out of the four uh, countries. Uh, uh, the deworming has been institu institutionalized in, uh, in four countries and also uh, is in line with our uh, regional frameworks uh, reaching the unreached framework. Uh, we, we, the, the, we are trying to, uh, in the region, there is effort uh, underway to integrate efforts, uh, for instance, the, the first ever integrated mapping, mapping of NTD uh, is done in two uh, provinces of uh, PNG uh, since the, the, the launch of the Global Lymphatic Filariasis uh, Program. Next slide, please. Okay, so what are our technical uh, priority areas? Uh, you know, there are, since there are, uh, you know, an inventory of challenges, of course, there are a lot of priorities but uh, you know, to, to group the priorities in three groups, the first, and, and again, in line with the context of the region and our uh, uh, frameworks, uh, regional frameworks, the first three would be uh, integration. Integration ag across diseases, uh, and, and we know the benefits of uh, integration for NTDs, across diseases, across uh, programs, across interventions. Uh, the second would be uh, cross-sectoral uh, collaboration for NTDs. Uh, and then uh, a strong alignment with PHC and universal health coverage. Now, the second set uh, would be, uh, you know, surveillance uh, and supply of essential commodities because without surveillance, we don't know what's happening and without, and we all know that, without, uh, you know, adequate and timely supply of drugs and commodities diagnostics, we cannot achieve success. And uh, the third one, uh, the third one would be the country ownership. This is extremely important for us. Next slide, please. 
Now, the role of uh, uh, WHO collaborating centers, uh, the, the, the main expectation would be uh, to, to fill in the critical research gap, the information gap. And, and I'm, uh, you know, CC can, uh, can, CCs can play a key role in this, given their uh, expertise and mandate. Similarly, uh, as I mentioned in the priorities, uh, because they are working closely with the in-country partners and so uh, enhancing country ownership, that is another, uh, you know, thing that uh, CCs can play a key role in. And of course, the capacity building in critical areas uh, such as surveillance, integration, supply chain, and all the other uh, key, uh, you know, components of the, you know, the global uh, roadmap. And, uh, and, and finally, networking and partnerships, and we are really happy to, to hear the announcement of this network. Uh, it's such a great news for the, you know, those who are uh, working in the NTD area. Yeah, thank you very much. I think this is the last slide from my side. Uh, back to Dr. Lu. Okay, I, uh, thank you very much, um, Dr. Kamajena and the Kazian and uh, uh, Dr. Liu Yue. It's very good, excellent presentation to tell us the general information about the WHO collaboration centers and also show some uh, challenges. So next the topic, we will focus on the uh, WHO collaborating center related to the neglected tropic diseases. I think there globally there's a, a, a more than 50 um, collaborations uh, related to the NTDs. So now Professor Joe will show us some results. Please. Thank you. Okay. First of all, thank you so much for your uh, coming to this uh, webinar. And uh, I also would like to thank my staff for uh, work together to analysis uh, where and uh, what is the 54 uh, NTD related WHO Corby Center in the world. And uh, we'll just share this screen. So uh, as uh, uh, several VIPs already mentioned, the two rounds of the load map, one was uh, and uh, another the set the up updated and one is uh, 20, uh, 12, one. So we review those uh, uh, WHOCC related to the NTD. Actually, would like to strengthen information exchange and enhance synergies of among NTD related WHOCC under the WHO roadmap TD elimination. So I lost. Yes, okay. Sorry, I'm coming again. So can you hear now? Yes, clear. Okay, thank you. So the, the major purpose uh, to analysis of those uh, NTD related to WHOCC, uh, it was to strengthen the information exchange and enhance synergies of among the NTD related WHOCC under the WHO load map toward the NTD's elimination. And so specifically three uh, objectives are to identify all of the NTD related to the WHOCC in the world and to understand their work scopes, particularly the shared work scopes uh, and to provide the basis for discussion on the potential cooperative area among our WHO CC. So we actually searched the data from a WHO uh, a website and also supported by WHO staff. So all those data we collected and uh, made the database uh, for all the 54 uh, NTD. And uh, who are they and where are they? And uh, you can see the location of those uh, WHOCC in the afro, three of them from uh, Tanzania, 
uh, Congo and South Africa. And the MRO, they have uh, 13 WHOCC uh, located in the Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Colombia, Cuba, USA. And uh, MRO, uh, about four, uh, located in Egypt, Iran, Sudan, Tunisia. And uh, Europe, uh, 18, located in the Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, UK. And uh, for the zero, they have eight, India, Thailand, located. And uh, for WEPRO, actually eight uh, centers, uh, located in uh, Australia, China, and uh, Malaysia. So in total, 26 countries of the world, they hold those uh, WHOCC to contribute to the roadmap of NTD. So uh, I wouldn't, I don't like to mention all, all, read all the names, but uh, I just screen it. You can see three countries, three CC in Afro, and thirteen in Emerald, and uh, four in Emerald, and uh, eighteen in Europe, and eight in Zero, eight in uh, Webro. So what kind of uh, entities targeted and uh, what folks are uh, areas are shared by those WHOCC? You can see the rabies, they have 10 centers, CC. And uh, vector bone disease, there are eight centers. NTD in general, eight. Dishmanesis, five. Trypanosomiasis, four. Phyllosis, three. Chagas disease, three, dengue, three, helminthesis, three, schistosomiasis, two, echinococcus, two, trachoma, two, leprosy, two, zoonosis, two, and then uh, one for each of on the uh, geniculosis, strangulosis, uh, mesotoma, and uh, uh, mesobacteria, oscaron, and uh, scabies as well and uh, obstacles. So actually different uh, uh, area, they're really different. Eh? Uh, so we extract some uh, keywords. You can see for the rabies, they mainly focus on the clinical and epidemiology data. And for the diagnosis, take services uh, with the laboratory support and the surveillance and the control program and the policy on rabies elimination. For the vector bone disease, eight, uh, uh, centers. They are mainly focused on the strategies for vector control, insecticide resistance, training in laboratory, diagnostic and vector control tools, operational research, or development of operational guidance. For NTD in general, you can see the training, diagnosis, and operate research mainly, and as well as the data. And for the leishmanesis, and uh, they have work on the monitoring and evaluation, diagnostic and control tools, training and dissemination information. So for the trypanosomiasis, mainly focus on the control and surveillance training, diagnosis and biobank uh, specimens. So for the phyllosis, is a work on the strategies, new products or no novel strategies mobility management and disability prevention. For the chugs, is mainly focused on training. And for the dengue helminthesis, they work on the vector control, national laboratory, strategy development, and the networking as well, and the training, and also organizing the, some different survey and the burden estimation. And for schistosomiasis echinococcus, they focus on the control and elimination, immunodiagnostic tools, and data platform, international networking, and training. And for trachoma, leprosy, and zoonosis, they focus on the silo surveillance, operational research, training, capacity building, and uh, the virtual library and uh, laboratory training as well. And uh, for others, actually focus on the open uh, operational research, diagnostic services, and treatment, case management, uh, and uh, data recording. For the phyresis, scabies, or and mainly on the vector control and uh, 
vector classification, diagnosis, and uh, medication, and the One Health approach. So uh, we actually, after analysis of those different areas, we would like to propose the cooperation areas, mainly focus on the uh, 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 support of the three pillars of the uh, uh, NTD load map, the new load map. So, so first uh, we will suggest uh, to focus on the capacity building for all our networking. So we may can uh, co-host the training or co-develop training material and diagnostic services, laboratory capacity, uh, yeah, uh, entomology vector control surveillance, and also management strategies for the, including the uh, clinical management, intensified disease management strategy, et cetera. The second, uh, Corporate area is on the research. The research can be the field research and the data handling and the innovative tools approach. And uh, then the third one is uh, other type of the work based on the different uh, 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 type of the uh, uh, diseases. And uh, but uh, we can uh, focus on the advocacy and the dissemination of the policy uh, and uh, also provide the technical consultancy in the different uh, uh, area, uh, different countries. And then uh, we are formal corporate networks are set up in these uh, 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 areas. So this is uh, we are proposed. I think uh, during the discussion, we will propose more. So then we recorded it and uh, we hope we can have some uh, working group to work on it and make everybody happy. So. Uh, we need uh, action now, act together, and invest uh, in entities together. So thank you once again for your listening. Uh, thank you, Professor Zhu. It's, um, it's a very impressive uh, report. So he uh, has already analyzed uh, characters of the WHO uh, collaborating centers related to the NTDs. So this is very important and um, also proposed uh, some priorities for this network. So I think it's, maybe it's uh, later we can discuss uh, in details. Um, so I would like to thank all of the five speakers in these sessions. And um, because the time is very limited, so we don't have the opportunities to give us um, to the, some real question and answer. So um, I would like to over this chair to Dr. Susie Ford to the next session and panel discussion. Thank you very much once again. We are moving to the panel discussion with a bit of delay. So we we'll try to keep on time by making contribution and discussion shorter. And uh, in this panel, we have a number of collaborating centers. I'm not, I'm not going to list them, but by giving the floor, I'll specify who's going to speak. Oh, we have already the list here, so no need to go through it. And uh, what we'd like to see here is really focusing on two questions. The first question is how to strengthen the role of WHO collaborating centers on neglecting, tro neglected tropical diseases in the future. And the second question is how to promote the collaboration among WHO collaborating okay. centers on neglected tropical diseases. This should be an open discussion, but we will start first with Dr. Ni Chao from China. Thank um, you, Chair, for your kind introductions and the invitations. Distinguished guest, and all the participants, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, happy new year. It's my great honor to join these meetings and discussions. Currently, we are still in the, during the Chinese traditional new years, the spring festivals. Today, we had brought in the number of the important events. One is the NTD days today, which allowed the country around the world to pay attention to the population affected by the NTDs and to put more emphasis on NTDs, prevention and control. One is the MOU signing ceremony of WHO Collaborative Center Network 
on NTDs. And the last one is uh, to declare the first network of the WHO Collaborative Center on NTDs to start working. We all recognize the uh, harmfulness of the NTDs and this group of the diseases still cause the high disease burdens affecting more than 1 billion people. Ending the NTDs is not only on the planning and the initiative, but also need more actions. So we must work together and collect of the great efforts to push NTDs control forwards more than ever. Especially it's the responsibility and the mission for WHO Collaborative Center in these meetings. If talking on the how to strengthen the role of the WHO Collaborative Center and NTDs in the future, in my understanding, first of all, we need to have the clear goals that might go into the following point. The first is giving full play to the influence and radiation driving role of WHOCC in the countries, in the region, and even over the world. Second is uh, strengthening the cooperation among the network members and to let the network become the an innovation incubators for scientific theories, technologies, and uh, methodologies. A platform for the discipline development and the professional training and uh, the propellant and important support for NTDs prevention and control. Third is uh, promoting the to attract the attention from the government, whole society, and the population around, to increase the influence and the leading role of the technology as WHO Collaborative Center. We all believe only cooperation can achieve the win-win result. We should make cooperation based on the mutual respect, mutual trust, openness, and transparency and information sharing. Cooperation is relevant to the cooperation, competition, communication, and coordination. It means each center can contribute its own strengths and complementary advantage. And then we all achieve, we will achieve the goal we are approaching. To ensure the network work efficiently, I think it may include to establish a working mechanism and the framework of the network including set up the regular and the irregular communication, academic and personal exchange, to strengthening information sharing, such as circulating the network news and progress periodically if possible, to promoting the joint project application and multi-party collaborated research. Although the net NTD still cause a vast damage to the human's health. They have not yet got the attention as they should. Now the network is studying. It's a highly expected <coughs> this platform to dedicate to the research and development, prevention and control on NTDs, and to make sustainable impacts on the government, health policy, and the priority areas for international support. This is my comment and consideration. Thank you very much for your chair. Thank you. Dr. Sassi, you need to unmute. Sorry. Um, so thank you very much, Dr. Li Let me now move to Dr. Kiong Li from China. Do you hear me? Yes. yes. I, it's my pleasure to <laughs> attend this uh, uh, opening ceremony for the network on T NTD. Uh, I'm uh, a chief I'm from uh, uh, China CDC uh, and uh, the WHO Collaborative Center for Vector Surveillance and Management. And uh, first of all, uh, <clears throat> I think we need to know uh, the uh, all the um, collaborative centers uh, for the uh, NTD and their strengths, their resources, and their uh, <clears throat> uh, their, their uh, research background, then we can make use of all the strengths, resources, 
uh, for the NTD uh, control and elimination in the world. And uh, second, I think we can take this opportunity to establish a platform for information sharing, for the uh, training, research, and uh, development. And on the other hand, uh, we can make use of this uh, network then to connect with uh, the other uh, institutes or the uh, other uh, universities, then we can uh, work together uh, for the promotion and the, uh, and the control uh, program on the NTD collectively or for the, uh, the most uh, um, prioritized uh, NTDs in the dif different uh, regions, uh, for example, in WEPRO, in uh, Africa, or in the other uh, regions, uh, then we can um, make use of the all the resources for the uh, one or uh, several of them of the uh, next like, the, the, the tropical diseases. Then we can uh, develop a working plan or roadmap uh, to promote the elimination of the NTDs. Uh, in the country level or the regional level or the global uh, level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Kiong Lee. Let me now give the floor to Dr. Peter Stanman from Switzerland. Yes. yes, thank you very much. And glad to be here in this um, panel. A lot has been said already about the value of collaboration and the need to advance the control and elimination agenda against entities. I will be short here, but I would like to highlight one point that is very dear to me. The network of WHO collaborating centers is valuable in itself for exchange among us. But the true value for me is if we manage to advance control and elimination in ways which would not be possible without collaboration. And I believe we here, we are WHO collaborating centers with a kind of a seal of approval. We are predestined to design and implement collaborative projects, very concrete actions which benefit those in need, those affected by NTDs. This can be implementation research programs. This can be technical assistance to national control programs. This can be trainings as it has been mentioned. But for me, it's important that this network is not only a platform for exchange, but also a platform to develop concrete actions, to implement them, and then to share the experiences so that others can also benefit from it. I believe there is a lot of trust and a lot of mutual understanding among us. And there are already examples of such projects. And building on that, we can really have an impact on NTD control and elimination agendas in the different countries, but also globally. This is my wish for the network and also uh, my belief what we can achieve. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter. Let me now call upon Professor Hanan Elbaz from Egypt. Hello, everybody. Uh, let me introduce myself first. I'm uh, Hanan al uh, Professor of Immunology from uh, TBRI, uh, Children of the Heart Research Institute in Egypt, and I'm the director of the WHO Collaborating Center for Systematic Control. 
Actually, um, I would like to thank first uh, uh, Dr. Chu for his initiative about this networking. And uh, thank you all for all um, uh, what you have said about the collaboration and how to uh, emphasize this uh, uh, network. Um, and uh, I think um, uh, mainly I have uh, only a few points. I will not make it long. Um, uh, first, uh, uh, I think the collaboration uh, on a technical uh, on technical assistance and um, research because there is many uh, point of research. I think we uh, this is a very important point. Um, maybe I'm working mainly with the diagnostics, so I, I think we need. Uh, a lot of research in diagnostics for the MTDs, and we need uh, to work together in, uh, in this research. And uh, the idea of collaborative um, uh, projects is a very good idea. I agree with it. And um, also the second point is the training uh, and the capacity building. Uh, we can um, uh, uh, make a, a exchange experience and uh, and make training every institute makes the utmost benefit of its um, uh, 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 experience. And we can make a collaborative training and uh, exchange the, the expertise. And, um, and uh, this is very important. And we have uh, 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 such an experience in our collaborating center. We have done a, a virtual training uh, uh, for uh, um, for the uh, maintenance of life cycle of schizomyces and antigen preparation and polyclonal and monoclonal antibody production. And actually it was very successful and more than 200 uh, persons shared uh, with us and participated with us, mainly from uh, Africa and other countries uh, all around the world. So I think this is very important to make uh, training programs together. This will uh, uh, help in capacity building of uh, um, uh, in countries, um, uh, and we can help uh, the um, governmental institutions to and um, uh, share with the uh, uh, policy um, um, in the management of um, uh, entities in these countries. Um, uh, I think the last thing I am uh, very optimistic about this networking. And I think it will, it's a, a very uh, a right move uh, towards the achieving the goals of the roadmap. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Anand. Let me now give the floor to Dr. Banchak Spira from Thailand. Uh, thank you, Dr. Susi. Good morning, good afternoon, maybe good evening for everyone in this room. Glad to see our old friends around, especially Professor Joe, who organized these such important meetings today. We're having a networking also Professor Jerk Usinger, long time no see, and also <laughs> Peter. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, I agree with all of you. You mentioned about how to strengthen uh, the role or the issue of uh, CC in, in uh, fighting against the, the NTDs. But I would like to emphasize again that in case of we would like to uh, strengthen our role uh, at the country levels. Yeah, I believe that most of our who CC can get involved with the national policies. And at uh, regionally, I believe that the networking that both Joe and team try to set up will be the platform that we can share knowledge whatever diagnostics, uh, the treatment or control of NTD. That is the best way at regional or even globally. So that is why what you guys mentioned about uh, whatever the, the uh, area that we plan to do. Dr. Joe mentions about uh, three things that we should cooperate over the networkings this time. I agree with all, but just to adding, because certain countries in, in the the poor area, we don't have the, the disease mapping. If we can add the disease mapping, whatever by using the GS. And this, this mapping can uh, uh, list the important diseases. And, and I believe that this is can uh, uh, provide information to the policy maker. Once we have evidence-based disease burden in the disease. I think that's all shortly. Yeah, because the time is running now. Thank you very much. Thank you.
you very much, Dr. Bonchev. Let me now move to Dr. Fabi Shahar from Malaysia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Fall from WHO. Uh, yeah. Uh, First and foremost, uh, myself have done my PhD on vector for leishmaniasis. Even though Malaysia don't have leishmaniasis, it's a vector uh, disease. You have only imported cases, but I have to do the uh, vector controls and everything on the leishmaniasis vector. So why not for to strengthen our collaboration? First, we have to maintain our loops of email so that we can alert anybody in the groups. Okay of any emerging diseases from this NTD. So secondly, we can list down our forte or our expertise, uh, list down. Every center have to list down their expertise and their contacts of the experts and their email so that we can directly link or connect it to the person itself, what the expert can help each other from different countries. So, so uh, uh, this uh, the problem with us is we less communication. So I think by email, perhaps the best way we can communicate uh, faster. So uh, for example, we have dengue situation in Malaysia, a lot of cases for dengue and also malaria for Nolasa malaria, Pinolasa. So for dengue, there's, there's a method for COVID-19 mRNA, but why not for Dengue mRNA. So, is it really neglected? The dengue, this, since they're not in in US, so why this no mRNA uh, production for this dengue? So we are working on it, but uh, slow and steady. I think uh, uh, time is too limited in this a uh, big uh, crowds of expertise in this group today, and I think uh, I don't want to delay uh, to take more time. Of you, and I think that's all for for the time being. Thank you very much, Mr. Paul, Dr. Paul. Thank you very much, Dr. Hadri. And let me now move to Dr. Adriano Casuli, Italy. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Good, mo good morning from at least from Italy. Uh, really happy to be part of this uh, multilateral network. I'm. Um, really practical so for this reason i'm sharing my uh, my screen since i think can you see my screen not yet not yet so let me try just again um, okay okay i think you can see now okay. my screen Okay, I think that we really need to, you know, to have a clear picture of, you know, the activities behind uh, this collaborating center so we can really understand what are the common points so we can really create together. So I'm briefly presenting in less than two minutes the activities of this WHO collaborating center and I already think there is something really in common with some other irrespective of the disease. In this case, we are dealing with uh, uh, cyst neglected cystic and alveolar echinococcosis. Um, uh, how we uh, supported this uh, international collaborative research in the field of this NTDs uh, by the coordination of international research funded projects uh, that created the ground during uh, last years from the inception of this WHO collaborating center starting from 2016. Uh, most of these activities were funded by the European Commission, uh, in particular FP7 and Horizon 2020 research projects. So we use uh, this consortia to generate uh, collaborative and multi-center studies on uh, cystic and alveolar echinococcosis. Uh, we published a set of studies on uh, very different topics, starting from uh, policy papers on NTDs. You can see that one on the top right. But most were focusing on um, 
molecular and clinical epidemi epidemiology of these diseases, uh, in particular in uh, Europe, Asia, and South America. We just recently, you can see this paper um, published in November, aiming to unveil the real impact of uh, cystic echinococcosis uh, at European level. But for instance, I think, or I really think there is something in common since a few years ago, we generated this uh, patent on salts of compounds having a benzimidazolic structure. Yeah, so, sorry? Okay. And uh, so this patent on benzimidazole uh, drugs is also including enantiomers. And we also supported uh, uh, prospective observational multicenter registers, such as this European register on CE, uh, currently engaging and enrolling more than 2,500 patients. And during all these activities, uh, we delivered health rapid impact packages uh, to people by means of ultrasound, population-based screens, uh, by means also of uh, public health educational campaigns in training to experts. So these are basically the core activities and this is uh, my institutes for the last uh, World NTD Day, uh, the Light Up campaign. Uh, and thank you for the attention. Thank you. Very much, Dr. Adriano. Let me now call on Professor Guo Jingyang from China. Hello, everyone. Thanks, uh, Dr. Fo. I'm really honored to be invited to participate in this wonderful event. Congratulations. And different from the previous speakers, I did not belong to any WHO cooperative centers but I have a lot of connections with WHO cooperative centers. And in the near future, we aim to apply WHO cooperative centers. And first of all, uh, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Guo Jingyang, the Vice Dean of School of Tropical Medicine from Hainan Medical University. And our university is located in a tropical island and with great connections with neighboring countries of Southeast Asia. The mission of the university is to build an international high-level medical university with distinctive tropical characteristic, which may help to establish the cooperation model for WHO corporate centers. First, the university established the Belt and Road Tropical Medicine Alliance in 2018, a total of um, 130 institutions from more than 40 countries and regions have participated. And four international tropical medicine forums have been successfully held since 2018. And the Belt and Road Tropical Medicine Alliance will be fully integrated with the WHO CCs on the NTDs and other organizations, not only on the tropical disease diagnosis, treatment, but also on the field training activities and epidemiological studies. Since we have strong team working on clinical medical care on tropical diseases in five different affiliated hospitals. And we also good at done data handling and modeling uh, experiences. Secondly, we have set up a long-term international and domestic cooperation with the world famous university and the research institution. For instance, we have signed MOU with the Swiss TPH uh, York is here, Peter Steinman is here, and also the Mahiru School of uh, Tropical Medicine in Thailand. At the same time, many projects have been set up to strengthen the future cooperations between. And also we have long and deep cooperations with National Institute of Parasitic Disease, China CDC. Professor Zhou invited me to join this uh, event and we, we will have more joint projects in, in the futures. Last but not least, the university is hoping to cooperate uh, with all these WHO centers and other international organizations and institutions to carry out activities on tropical medicine personnel training and scientific and technical projects. So in the near future, the Hainan Medical University aims to apply WHO cooperative center on field evaluation 
of vector control approaches by using our unique tropical resources and uh, ideal location. So thank you very much and looking forward to working together with you more closely in the near future. Thank you very much, Professor Ian. Let me now call upon Dr. Kazim Ezbola from WHO Repro Office in Namib. Thank you, Dr. Fal. Thank you so much. Uh, so I, I would like to be very brief and specific. I know yeah. colleagues talked about um, important things. So I just want to focus on two points, engagement and partnership management of this new network, which has been recently launched. In terms of engagement, engagement with WHO, uh, I think the engagement should uh, go beyond uh, the, the, the regular meetings with the responsible officer in uh, in WHO. Uh, for instance, our team is planning to have meetings with the collaboration centers, you know, like team to team meetings. That would be very beneficial. Uh, and secondly, act uh, actively participate in the uh, technical advisory groups. So that could be another thing that would be very beneficial. So engagement, not only with WHO, but also with other partners, of, as, as we mentioned before. And now the second one is, uh, partnership management and strengthening the secretariat. Uh, uh, the director general of uh, China CDC generously offered to host the secretariat of the network. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the secretariat, the management of the secretariat is really critical. Uh, and uh, with the strengthening of this uh, secretariat, the network would uh, really be successful in achieving its goals. One final point on the, the secretariat and the network, I think, uh, having a strategic plan uh, by this network would also be very beneficial. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Kazim, for your concrete action plan. I think it will be very useful for the network. Um, uh, I think you are the, the last speaker, so I will just summarize very quickly. We have heard very important point from all the speakers, all the collaboration centers, but also from Professor Yang, the Dean of the School of Structural Medicine in Helen. And uh, we have very important point we can just highlight. And uh, first of all, assigning clear role of the virtual collaborative centers at national, international level is one point. I like it, Professor Ning, strengthen collaboration and coordination for innovation, incubator of innovation, forcing attention by government and civil society. We have also heard from Professor Liu the need to strengthen and resources for each WHO collaborative center. And this should be well communicated to enhance collaboration from to Peter, implementation, research, and technical collaboration should aim to develop concrete actions to implement activity and benefit the population affected by NTDs towards the NTD agenda. Professor Anna highlights the need for technical assistance, research, especially on diagnosis, as highlighted in the NTD roadmap, training and capacity building through exchange of exper experiences and expertise. And uh, also joint training across collaborative center for the benefit of the affected countries. And uh, we have heard from uh, Dr. Banchap also the crucial need to strengthen the role of country level because collaborative centers are known abroad, but not in their own country. The issue of disease mapping, you know, as a crucial step by supporting this and key other areas. I think this is important because we need to work based on evidence, making sure that we understand the epidemiology is very critical. And uh, this can contribute to uh, the profile of entities for decision making. From uh, the Kadri, um, uh, the need to list down WHO collaborating centers expertise and email contact to foster connection and cross fertilization across WHO network. For example, in the area of dengue control, and from Dr. Adriano, we had the need to have better understanding of what each 
collaborate in some so that we can establish collaboration and strengthen the network. Knowing the present and activities and uh, I think uh, from Professor Ian, I think the aim is to become WHO collaborative centers. They're already working with a number of collaborative centers. We know and uh, hoping that they work on clinical care and that the modeling will be an added value to what we are trying to achieve together. And finally, we had concrete action plan proposed by our colleague Kazim in terms of engagement with WHO and other partners. The need to strengthen partnership and the secretary for the network. And finally, the need to develop strategic plan for the network. So this is extremely important. It will help us to be more accountable and to be able to monitor progress on achieving our goal and objective. I think this is extremely useful and uh, we take all the action plan to be part of the network action plan, I believe. Thank you very much and back to you, Professor Chu. Thank you. Thank you so much for the, now we move to the last session. And the last session, maybe I would like to a little bit to summarize uh, uh, of this uh, meeting. And then uh, we are going to launch the WHO Corporate Centers Network on uh, NTD. Then followed by uh, 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 closing remark from uh, Switzerland and WHO HQ. So first of all, uh, through the opening session and the keynote speak session and the panel discussion, all of us uh, understanding the big progress uh, for the NTD uh, program has been gained through the first roadmap. Now we are coming to the new stage for the new roadmap and which give us a more high targets uh, to reach it. So the neglect big disease, we cannot uh, eliminate all of them, but uh, we really would like to eliminate the neglect, these words. So neglect means the neglect population, neglect location, neglect the resources, and neglect the subjects. So we hope with our joining together, we really can eliminate this neglect word. Second, and uh, we consider it is really, really important for our join together among our WHO CCs related to the NTDs. And uh, because we are working in different uh, uh, areas and uh, not only area of uh, the, the we mean the location, but also the disciplinaries and uh, uh, different because the NTD they consist of the 20 kind of disease and uh, even in the each disease we have different subjects. So uh, thanks uh, uh, Zik, Zik already mentioned that we really have the 15 subjects we can work together. So, and so, which means we really, really need some mapping work, uh, more detailed mapping work. It's not like today, my presentation is really rough, but we understanding this is a way we can do, do some mapping. So the mapping project can help us to understanding what kind of gap, which we can really join together and put them together uh, uh, work together. Uh, so this is a very important effort. So the, the, the last issue is we already uh, get a lot of discussion on the, uh, our networking uh, uh, mechanism. And uh, so we need some uh, working group uh, together. So before this meeting, we had a, uh, uh, several meetings with the directors of the uh, WHO Corporate Center, and we agree, we set up uh, uh, a working group uh, and uh, our institute uh, located in Shanghai can provide the services for the sectorate. Sectorate need a communication with all the directors of the WHO CC and also uh, uh, to do more work on the mapping and help uh, to uh, provide more information on the resources uh, 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 involvement. So the engagement uh, uh, to the different uh, area, engagement with the different agencies 
and engagement with the WHO sectorate and it is really important to help our working together uh, within the networking. So this uh, three uh, 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 conclusion is really important for our webinar today. So, and before this meeting, we also already have a, a digital signing of our uh, MOU for set up this uh, WHO COVID Center Network on uh, NTD. So it is time Let's see how we open this uh, network. So my colleague will help to open the scene, I'll open the screen of the network. So this is a digital uh, screen is open for the launching of this network. So thank you once again, particularly for those uh, directors uh, from seven institutions to make uh, efforts. So we're really happy to see our joining and uh, sitting together today. Thank you once again. So now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Yoga Yuzinga to give the closing remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Cho. And this was now uh, impressive to see the digital signing. Uh, it was a first ever for me, I must admit. I, I would just like to summarize in one minute. I believe what we have discussed is really a call for action. Act now and act together. Isn't that the theme of this world? NTD day, act now, act together, a call for action. What I would see is from your analysis, Professor Cho, on these 54 WHO collaborating centers in the NTD space, I really think this should already be summarized in a type of a manuscript. And there should be a few appendices where exactly some of the colleagues said, who is responsible for what so that this really becomes workable. Secretariat, this is needed. And I think there is nobody more committed and uh, with, a, with, a, with a track record in running such secretariat like you, because you have also run initially for more than 20 years now, the RNAS plus network, and this also, I think, can serve as a role model. So I think a call for action, this was the launch, and we are ready to contribute. Back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for your one point, but the very important points for action now and together. So now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Sosi Fo to deliver your closing remarks. Thank you very much. Professor Chu, I'm really delighted to start the World Entity Celebration with this webinar. I've been really struck once again in the commitment of all you know, the expert institution into working together to implement the NTD roadmap and to make sure that we have impact at the population level. I think this joint commitment materialized today with the signing of the network of WHO collaborative centers of NTD is an important step in implementation of the roadmap. And I would like to thank everybody for the commitment and be assured that I'm also fully committed to working with you and with all our partners to protect life, to save life of the most affected population. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you so much today. And uh, thanks all of you to uh, your input is very important for us, uh, for our future cooperation. And uh, we really can work together in the future and meet together in person uh, later of this year, I hope. And uh, my sectorate, uh, we are working harder for serving for all of you. So thank you once again for your efforts. So let's close in our uh, meeting. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, bye -bye. Thank you very much. And see you all later. Yeah, see, see you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. bye, -bye.